In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of mercy, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, as always, we're in need of God's mercy, and the whole world desires God's mercy. And I think there's a lot of misunderstandings regarding God's mercy, so I think it helps it'll help to take a look at some definitions from the modern Catholic dictionary by Father John Hardin. The definition of mercy. The disposition to be kind and forgiving, founded on compassion, mercy differs from compassion or the feeling of sympathy in putting this feeling into practice with a readiness to assist. It is therefore the ready willingness to help anyone in need, especially in need of pardon or reconciliation. So I think we should also look at the word reconciliation because it's uh, an integral part of mercy. Reconciliation the act or state of reestablishing friendship between God and a human being or between two persons. Reconciliation with God is necessary after a person has lost the divine friendship through grievous sin. It requires repentance on the part of the sinner and forgiveness on the part of God. The willingness to be reconciled with another is a necessary condition for obtaining God's mercy. The Holy Spirit desires our conversion and salvation. God calls us constantly, but we don't want to change. We're attached to the pleasure of sin. We evade suffering and mortification, which are necessary to our healing. God wants to purify us in the fire of suffering, but we rebel against it. Fulton Sheen speaks of this problem about our attachment to sin and the misconception we have about freedom. He says, freedom is conditioned upon obedience to law. There is no such thing as freedom from law. There is only freedom within law, whether that law be scientific, natural, human, or divine. The problem today is that uh, we have an idea of freedom that in the end is incompatible with mercy. Today, according uh, to this quote from uh, Fulton Sheen, we have taken freedom to be synonymous with doing whatever we please, whether it is good or evil, believing whatever pleases us to believe, whether it is true or false, I'm paraphrasing him. The result is that freedom degenerates into a form of selfishness expressed in such slogans as be yourself and frowned upon, frowns upon all forms of restraint and sacrifice as contrary to the individual libido 
and ends up in what might be called the exaltation and glorification of the ego. There's also the catechism, which is the authority for us, our primary point of reference after the Bible on these moral questions, or actually it's based on the Bible and the teaching of the church, and what it says, which ties to our readings today. The human heart is heavy and hardened. You remember we heard you know, this, uh, the readings today regarding the hardness of our hearts and the call to conversion. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And the gospel, excuse me, the catechism, I'm reading from the uh, section on reconciliation. The human heart is heavy and hardened. God must give man a new heart. Conversion is first of all a work of the grace of God who makes our hearts return to him. Restore us to thyself, O Lord, that we may be restored, it says in the book of Lamentations. God gives us the strength to begin anew. It is in discovering the greatness of God's love that our heart is shaken by the horror and weight of sin and begins to fear offending God by sin and being separated from him. The human heart is converted by looking upon him whom our sins have pierced. Let us fix our eyes on Christ's blood and understand how precious it is to his Father. For poured out for our salvation, it has brought to the whole world the grace of repentance. Now, as we had heard from the definition, mercy and reconciliation uh, imply conversion and repentance. Continuing with the catechism, Conversion is accomplished in daily life by gesture, gestures of reconciliation, concern for the poor, the exercise and defense of justice and right, by the admission of faults to one's brethren, fraternal correction, revision of life, examination of conscience, spiritual direction, acceptance of suffering, endurance of persecution for the sake of righteousness. Taking up one's cross each day and following Jesus is the surest way of penance. The first reading from the, the letter to the Hebrews, then, is a reminder of God's call to us and the danger of our not heeding his call, of remaining attached to sin and rejecting God's grace. The danger, of course, of, rec of rejecting God's grace is twofold. There's the consequence in this life and there's a consequence in the next. And the consequence in this life is that uh, until, as St. Augustine said, until we rest in God, we have no rest. Thou hast made us for thyself, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. And to a, a living conscience, uh, not being right with God, leaves us in a state of perpetual agitation. There is no peace for the soul that is out of harmony with God and God's will and God's law. So that's the consequence in this life. If we harden our hearts, if we're blind to God's right order for our life, then we're restless and we're not happy. And if we remain in that state without ever truly repenting and converting our lives, there's the danger then 
of eternal damnation. And that's also something that has to be considered in any discussion of mercy. We want mercy without conversion. We want salvation without letting go of sin. And this is uh, just a deception. In fact, uh, in the letter of Hebrews, it said, encourage yourselves daily while it is still today so that none of you may grow hardened by the deceit of sin. That's the blindness that we fall into uh, when we fail to heed God's voice and convert our lives. There are many, uh, many, many references I could make to the reality of hell. It's something that uh, today doesn't get much talked about as though it were only uh, sort of a fabled uh, possibility, and yet our Lord mentions it frequently in his message of the gospel. Uh, just to quote one citation from the Gospel of Matthew, then in, in his discourse on final judgment, then he shall say to them also that shall be on his left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. I don't think our Lord is just uh, spinning a yarn or saying uh, a fable to frighten people, but it's a warning of the reality of the possibility of eternal perdition. And as if that were not enough, our Lord recently, within the last hundred years, sent his mother uh, at Fatima to warn us. And I think everyone is well aware of her message uh, and the vision that she gave to the three shepherd children and which comes to us through one of those, Sister Lucia. It's a rather long quote, and I'll skip it now, but uh, it's well known that she showed the children's souls falling into hell and said that many uh, have no one to pray for them, to do penance, to make sacrifice, and so many souls are lost. And she said also primarily due to sins of the flesh. So we cannot underestimate uh, the moral danger that so many souls are in and live in, and unfortunately, uh, many die without ever being converted to the truth. So when we hear God's voice, as he urges us uh, in the scripture today, Hard, we have to not harden our hearts when we have that grace to recognize uh, our sin and we have to seek that grace, then we have to follow through and be converted. Uh, and that takes violence. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent bear it away. That's the gospel of St. Matthew. So when our corrupt will resists, we must yield to the truth, the truth of God's mercy and the truth of perdition and do violence if necessary to our will. This struggle is ongoing throughout life. Encourage yourselves daily while it is still today so that none of you may grow hardened by the deceit of sin.
the temptation to, on the one hand, harden our hearts and on the other hand, soften our brains uh, with a false concept of mercy and a, a false concept of salvation and perdition uh, can be remedied particularly, as we heard in the catechism, by looking at the suffering of Christ. Uh, a glance at the cross tells us the truth of mercy, the truth of salvation, and the reality of perdition. If it were uh, not necessary, our Lord would not have had to die on the cross. But his love and mercy for us is so great, and the danger of not heeding his voice is so great that uh, nothing less than dying upon the cross was necessary uh, in our Lord's estimation in order that we might be saved. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, let us heed God's voice let us practice mercy. Uh, let us be converted and proclaim the truth to a world that doesn't want to hear it, to souls hardened in sin. We have to tell, tell the truth, both of the reality of, of hell and eternal perdition, as well as the reality of God's mercy. The two are not incompatible. In fact, they're inseparable. The two truths, there's only one truth, and both aspects have to be considered so that we can uh, heed his voice and turn back to God and be faithful to his law without which there is not salvation. In all of this, we ask Our Lady, Mother of Mercy, to guide us in the way of truth, compassion, and salvation. Praise be Jesus and Mary.